morning, everyone, and welcome to our tour at 10. My name is Joshua Torrance. I'm the executive director here at the Bennington Museum. I'm so excited that you're with us and that um, you're enjoying these tours at 10. Uh, as we're closed uh, due to the pandemic situation uh, gripping our country. Um, today, I'm in our Bennington Modernism uh, Gallery. It's a really awesome place, um, probably one of my favorite galleries uh, in the museum. Uh, and we're going to be showing you the gallery and just talking a little bit about um, how this gallery came to be and why Bennington Modernism is so important. So, as is often the case, uh, I'd like to introduce you to Jamie Franklin, our curator, uh, my cohort in these tours at 10. Jamie, uh, tell us a little bit about the gallery. Good morning. So, um, Bennington Modernism is um, actually a term that um, we came up with here at the museum to describe the group of artists who were um, living and working here in the Bennington area, most of them associated with Bennington College. Um, Bennington College, which was a um, progress progressive um, college, um, women's college, that was founded here in Bennington and opened to students in 1932. Um, went on within its next couple of decades to become one of the leading um, art school in the country. Um, and it was drawing some of the best artists um, really in the world that were pushing the boundaries of abstraction. In the 1950s, um, um, they had some of the most important artists coming and showing their work. Jackson Pollock and Barnett Newman had their first solo shows at Bennington College in the 1950s. And Paul Feely, who was the head of the art department at Bennington College in the 1950s and 60s, gathered around him a group of artists, um, both as faculty prof professors who were teaching art, um, as well as students. Um, his most famous student being Helen Frankenthaler, who is um, um, lauded as being one of the innovators of color field abstraction in the 1950s and 60s. Um, this current installation of Bennington Modernism, we're calling it Bennington Modernism 3D, this gallery has been um, rotating about once a year for the last five years. Um, and this year we decided to explore um, the issue of three-dimensional um, art and sculpture, but also how artists transition between three dimensions, um, whether they're working on a two-dimensional um, space like a painting or a drawing or a print, and how they translate ideas of space and three-dimensionality from two dimensions into three dimensions. Um, the installation was inspired by two recent acquisitions. So right here in front of me and Josh um, is a sculpture by Isaac Witkin. Um, Witkin came to the college in the late 1960s. Um, um, he was part of a cohort of um, artists, um, including Jules Olitsky, Kenneth Nolan, and Anthony Caro. Um, Caro, of whom was really one of the great innovators of sculpture, um, in the world, he was a, a British artist. Um, um, he taught at St. Martin's um, in, in London, in England. Um, but he came over to teach um, at Bennington College in the 1960s. And Isaac Whitkin was part of that kind of flowering during that period. Um, he lived and worked here in Bennington um, through the 1970s. Um, and this was a piece that was given to us a couple of years ago. Um, it dates to 1970. It's called Maypock. And it's one of his classic um, painted welded steel sculptures. So um, um, it's, it's just a great example. We just recently had it inserted at the Williamstown Art Conservation Center. So it's now able to be enjoyed by the public and people and appreciate it as it was originally intended. Um, the other of our recent acquisitions that inspired this exhibition is this painting um, called I, um, I, I, tread, I, I Tread the Dark um, Mountain. Um, by Guy Goodwin. Guy Goodwin taught at Bennington College between 1980 and 1985. And what I really love about this painting, and it kind of served as the inspiration behind this installation, was it's, it's a painting, but it's a sculpture. It's both. It's hard to really kind of um, say it. Sometimes I call it a sculpture, sometimes I call it a painting. But he was talking about how he wanted to use the individual strokes and make them kind of individual elements. So he cut out pieces of plywood and then applied thick pigment to, to the um, each individual piece of plywood and then built up this very structural three-dimensional sculpture. Um, Goodwin had actually grown up in Birmingham, Alabama during the height of the civil rights movement in the 1950s and 60s. And he said this was kind of like a shield to him. Um, um, it was a way of protecting himself from the kind of 
um, ills of the world. And I think that's something that we can all be thinking about now as um, we're dealing with the kind of anxiety and fears of the pandemic. Um, so this is a, a shield to protect us from those ills that we encounter on a daily basis. Thank you so much, Jamie, for that excellent overview of the Bennington Modernism 3D show that is on view here at the Bennington Museum. Of course, um, we are bringing these to you because of the pandemic. We can't wait, though, to have you back here and see all this fantastic art in person. Um, you know, our mission is to connect people to this material so that they can have a, a deeper appreciation of not only our, our history, but of our culture. And um, we're excited to bring you these tours during the pandemic, but really the best days for all of us here at the museum are when you, our visitors, and our guests, and our members are here enjoying it with us. We can't wait to have you back. Um, there are, of course, lots of organizations and businesses that are having a hard time. Bennington Museum is not immune to that. If you would like to support us during this pandemic, uh, and if you're uh, supportive of these uh, tours at 10, uh, please consider becoming a member. Uh, you could buy a member for someone, or you could just uh, go online and, uh, and make a donation. Uh, you could also support us by sharing these videos and um, share them with your friends and your family and help us get the word out that we're gonna come back from this situation better and stronger than ever. Um, I'm confident of that. And I'm confident that our nation is gonna come back and survive and, and, and thrive when this is all done. Thank you so much for supporting us. Thank you for tuning in at 10. We'll see you next time.